Hello everyone, welcome back to the Blue Team training series, sponsored or brought to you by Linode and Hackersploit. In this video, we're going to be exploring the process of performing uh, memory forensics with volatility, more specifically, how to analyze memory dumps with volatility. So in the previous video, we, uh, we essentially took a look at how we can essentially dump our memory or volatile memory, if you will. Uh, also known as RAM from uh, an infected Linux system for the purpose of analysis. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at how to utilize uh, pretty much, uh, you know, one of the most powerful uh, memory forensics tools, which is called volatility. So uh, more specifically, we'll be focusing on how to analyze uh, memory, uh, Windows memory dumps, because those are the memory dumps that you're going to be frequently dealing with. Uh, but you can simply apply the same process to Linux memory dumps. I'll be explaining uh, what volatility is and how it can be used because it really is very simple and very powerful. Uh, the only um, the only thing that you'll need in regards to prerequisite is, uh, of course, uh, as I'll explore shortly, uh, you need to have an understanding of how to uh, essentially dump memory from both Windows and Linux systems. Uh, in this case, we're really not going to be covering the process of dumping uh, Windows memory because, uh, again, uh, there's plenty of tools that can be used to do that. So uh, what will we be covering in this video? I'll give you an introduction to volatility. We'll then take a look at how to install volatility and how to analyze memory dumps with volatility. So uh, the prerequisites are going to be, you know, fairly simple. So you can see that uh, you need to have a basic familiarity with digital forensics, uh, familiarity with Linux and various command line utilities and a basic understanding of how the Linux kernel works, uh, primarily because we're going to be working on Linux. Uh, so let's get an introduction to volatility. So what is volatility? Well, volatility is an open source memory forensics framework for incident response and malware analysis. It is written in Python and supports Microsoft Windows, Mac OS and Linux. We can utilize volatility to analyze and extract important information from a memory dump. This information will help us identify, uh, you know, running processes, files, user information, hashes, etc, etc. So uh, this information is very important because it allows an incident responder to identify when an attack occurred, where it originated from, uh, and much more. So, you know, uh, by uh, analyzing a memory dump, you pretty much get a, a good idea of what was running at the time, uh, what files were open, what files were being modified, etc, uh, etc. Et and this, uh, you know, can be used to, uh, to sort of uh, get a holistic view of what happened with regards to the actual intrusion or the compromise of this system. It's very important to note, however, that Volatility has two versions, uh, namely Volatility 2 and Volatility 3. Now, these versions are based on the fact that, uh, you know, Volatility was written in Python, so Volatility 2 is written in Python uh, 2 and Volatility 3 is written in Python 3. In this case, we'll be utilizing Volatility 2 uh, as it has a large number of useful plugins. If you're not familiar with plugins, don't worry, this will make sense uh, in a couple of seconds. Uh, as for the learning resources, you can take a look at the Volatility GitHub repository and uh, we are going to be uh, utilizing a few, uh, you know, intentionally created uh, memory labs that have been structured in a CTF format. So our objective will be to find flags within the actual memory and, uh, you know, uh, we'll be utilizing uh, some of these labs to essentially learn how to extract useful information from a Windows memory dump. Now, in regards to uh, the actual infrastructure, we're going to be utilizing the same Ubuntu 18.04 server that we had set up for analysis. And the reason I'm using Ubuntu 18.04 is primarily because uh, the Ubuntu 18.04 repositories already have the Volatility 2 package uh, within them. And that means we can easily install Volatility without uh, any issues. So with that being said, we can actually get started with a practical demonstration. So I'll just switch over to my Ubuntu VM. All right, so I am back on my Ubuntu VM and I'm currently on the Volatility GitHub repository. This link will be added as a resource to this video. And of course, all the links used will also be added. Um, so you can see this is the GitHub repo here. You can take a look at the uh, brief description that it provides us. So this is a volatile memory extraction utility framework. 
The Volatility Framework is a completely open collection of tools implemented in Python under the GNU General Public License for the extraction of digital artifacts from volatile memory, also known as RAM. Uh, the extraction techniques are performed completely independent of the system being investigated, but offer visibility into the runtime state of the system. The framework is intended to introduce people to the techniques and complexities associated with extracting digital artifacts from volatile memory samples and provide a platform for further work into this, ex uh, this exciting area of research. Um, so again, based uh, on the documentation here, you can see that um, Volatility supports investigations of the following memory images. So this is for Windows. So you can see it supports memory images taken or dumped from Windows XP all the way to Windows Server 2016. In the case of Windows 10 and Windows Server 2016, uh, you can see it provides you with, uh, you know, the requirements in terms of the build number for Windows 10. So including at least the following, uh, the, the following build number there. As for Linux, you can see it supports 32-bit Linux kernels uh, and 64-bit Linux kernels from version 2.6.11 to 5.5. And these are the supported uh, di distributions. So we have OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, Mandravia, etc. And you can also, uh, again, extract information from MacOS memory dumps right over here. So uh, it's important to note that uh, volatility does not provide memory sample acquisition capabilities. For acquisition, they are both free and commercial solutions available. Uh, one of them is Lime. And of course, in the case of Windows, which we will not be covering in this series, there's plenty of tools that can be used to dump Windows memory, one of which we'll actually see uh, running uh, you know, within the actual memory dump of the Windows system that we'll be analyzing or extracting information from. So in terms of the usage, it's fairly simple to use. Uh, if you type in the info command with volatility, you'll be provided with the address spaces here. Uh, also the profiles, uh, this is very important and we'll get to that uh, when we get there and then plugins. So this is arguably the most Im uh, important aspect of volatility. These are the plugins. So plugins essentially allow you to extract or dump information from the actual memory dump. So, you know, for example, we can display the process command line arguments. We can extract uh, history by scanning for command history, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, as I said, I'm going to be I'm going to be uh, utilizing an Ubuntu 18.04 server set up on Linode. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this to, uh, we can just say DFIR because we're not dealing with a compromised uh, Linux system now. And we're going to be downloading the memory dump, uh, you know, from another GitHub repo that I'll showcase in a couple of seconds. So I've already logged into that server via SSH, as you can see here. And uh, if we take a look at the Memlabs GitHub repository, you can see uh, this is a GitHub repository that essentially contains, uh, as it says here, uh, it essentially contains an introductory set of CTF style challenges, which is aimed to encourage stu students, security researchers, and also CTF players to get started with the field of memory forensics. So there's uh, about six labs here and they're sorted based on their difficulty. So lab zero, uh, will uh, essentially give you a write-up as to what needs to be done and how to utilize volatility uh, to essentially find the flags. And we are going to be using Lab 1. So if we click on Lab 1, which is called uh, Beginner's Luck, uh, that is also easy. We'll click on that there. And uh, you'll be provided with the actual challenge description, which is very important. So again, this sets the stage, uh, you know, for you being, uh, or for you essentially uh, emulating the role of an, uh, an incident responder. So my sister's computer crashed. We are very fortunate to recover this memory dump. Your job is to get all the important files from the system. From what we remember, we suddenly saw a black window pop up with uh, something being executed. All right, so that looks like there's some form of malware here. When the crash happened, she was trying to draw something. Hmm, interesting. Uh, that's all we remember from the time of the crash because the memory dump was taken at that particular point in time, which is, uh, you know, very useful. So this challenge is composed of three flags. Uh, I'll not be going, I'll not be getting all the flags. I'll only maybe get one or two and uh, I can leave the rest to you guys. Um, so we have the MD5 hash for the memory dump. So you can compare it when you actually download it and extract it. So the challenge file is available on Mega. Uh, it's about 155 megabytes and it is a 7-zip archive. And once you extract it, it's going to, uh, the memory dump is, I think, a couple of gigabytes. So I've already downloaded this within my downloads directory. 
And uh, in terms of resources, we're going to be utilizing CyberChef, which I'll be explaining. It essentially allows you to encode and decode uh, various types of hashes and uh, a ton more. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, what we'll do firstly is we'll get a volatility installed. So make sure you update your repository. So sudo apt get update and uh, sudo apt get install volatility. I already have volatility installed and uh, we'll give this a couple of seconds. All right, so volatility is running or we're running the latest version of volatility, which is version 2.6. Uh, that's perfectly fine. And now we actually need to transfer the memlabs 1.7 zip file onto this analysis server or the system we're going to be using for the analysis. So this that file is on my local system, so I can copy it over with SSH. So I'll use the SCP command and say from my downloads directory, I want you to transfer memlabs uh, 1.7 zip to the following server. So I'll just get my server IP here on Linode. There we are, I'll just copy that there. And I want to save it in the, um, in the home directory of the root user. So I'll hit enter, that's going to prompt me to enter my, uh, to enter my password here, which I will do. And that's going to transfer that file. So you can see it's about 150 megabytes or so. And uh, we're going to give this a couple of seconds. So that's going to transfer over. I'm just going to wait for this to complete. All right. So once the file is transferred, I'm just going to close this particular window there. And if I list out the contents of my home directory, you can see we have memlabs there. So to install or to extract this, we're going to be using a utility called p7zip, which you can install using the aptitude package manager. And we're going to say decompress or unzip memlabs. Uh, this is going to take a while because the file is quite large, as you'll actually see in a couple of seconds. So there we are. It's going to extract memory dump lab one dot raw, which is a Windows memory dump. However, we don't know the actual operating system or the addition of Windows. So I'll say DUSH here to display the size of the memory dump. It's about one gig, so that's perfectly fine there. Uh, once that is done, what we need to do now is we can actually open up volatility, right? So um, I'll, op I'll just run the volatility command and uh, we can open up the help menu, right? So there we are, you can see it's working perfectly fine. And the help command will essentially give you the uh, various command line options to use. So you have the ability to debug volatility, specify the plugin you'd like to use, print information about all registered objects. That's very important. And then you can specify the file name. Uh, and of course, in a couple of seconds, uh, this argument is pretty much going to be used to load in the memory dump itself. And uh, we can also, uh, there are a few other options here that we can use. Um, these are the supported plugin commands that we can use. And if we um, if we actually display the info command here, just going to type that in there, that's going to give you an idea of all the plugins. So these are all the plugins available. So you can see they're sorted based on the operating system. So these are the Mac plugins, and then you have uh, the Linux plugins here. And uh, the reason why I ran the help command is because it displays the it actually displayed the active plugins, which are currently available to us. So these are all the Windows plugins here, which we'll be exploring. We'll actually be focusing on some of the most important ones. Uh, and then, of course, uh, if we take a look at the other options here, you can see we have the profiles, right? So the profile aspect of volatility is very important because this uh, you will need to specify the profile based on the type of memory dump you're dealing with. So, for example, if the memory dump a uh, file was taken from a Windows 10 system, uh, which is a 64-bit, you'd need to specify that profile. Now, we can easily identify the profile to use for our memory dump that we have right over here, which is just called memory dump lab one, uh, by typing in the, follow the following command. So we can say volatility file memory dump lab one dot raw, and we can then say image info. We can use the image info plugin, and that'll tell us the version of Windows uh, here. So uh, we'll give this a couple of seconds. And uh, that should actually tell us uh, what version of Windows uh, is running or what version of Windows this memory dump was taken from. 
All right, so as you can see, it tells us right over here. So the suggested profiles, uh, the first one is pretty much the best option here. So it looks like uh, this dump was taken from a system running Windows 7 Service Pack 1 x64. Uh, and, uh, you know, it then gives you uh, information here regarding, uh, you know, the actual AS layer one, uh, which tells you right over here, the, uh, the Windows AMD 64 paged memory, and then the file address space. Uh, and then of course you have the DTB uh, address there, etc. Okay, so the image date and time, that's when it was um, taken and the local time is uh, set here. So uh, plus five hours and 30 minutes, I think that's uh, plus five hours, 30 minutes GMT time, uh, but I could be wrong there. All right, so this information is very useful because what we can do now is we can perform a K, uh, KDGB scan. The KDGB, uh, the KDBG um, scan is used to uh, essentially uh, display the structure maintained by the Windows kernel for debugging processes or purposes. Uh, it essentially contains a list of the running processes and the loaded kernel modules and will essentially uh, you know, give us information regarding the, um, the actual operating system that it came from. So this is much more accurate and it'll tell us the architecture. So what we can do uh, is again, just specify that we want to, uh, in this case, we'll just say profile. Uh, we can just say KDGB scan and we'll give that a couple of seconds. Uh, we must specify what we want to do. Uh, we've not specified a profile yet. In that case, we can specify the profile uh, that was recommended. So we can say profile is equals to uh, Windows uh, 7 SP1 X64 and then specify uh, KDGB scan. So I'll hit enter. Um, and in this case, it looks like we're still getting an error. Uh, let me see that here. So KDBG scan, not uh, GB. So KDBG scan. And I'll hit enter and this should work now. And uh, we'll give this a couple of seconds. So remember, our objective is to find the flags, uh, you know, hidden. And of course, this is uh, just used for training purposes. So uh, again, there we are. You can see that um, it's going to display quite a lot of output, but it actually tells us right over here. So in, in instantiating KDBG using the following kernel, and uh, we get the actual uh, KDBG owner tag check, which is set to true. The profile uh, suggestion in this case is Windows 7 Service Pack 1 x64, and the version is 64 bit. All right, so that means we're using the correct profile. Uh, and uh, we can essentially get started with extracting informa uh, important information. So the first bit of uh, information that we can try and extract is the list of uh, running processes that was, uh, or the processes that were running during the actual capture or the actual dump. So now that we have the profile specified, we're just going to say PS list to display the list of running processes. There we are and we'll give this a couple of seconds, and there we go. So from that memory dump, uh, volatility allows us to see what Windows processes were running at the time of this particular, at the time when that memory dump was taken. And uh, you can actually see we have the offset here. We then have the name of the process, the process ID, which is going to be very important. And then you have the PPID, the threads, handles, uh, and then of course the actual start time. Uh, which is really, really cool. And if we take a look at the brief here, we can see that uh, this individual's uh, sister's computer crashed and uh, what she was doing, it did, uh, there wasn't any mention of her name, but uh, she saw a black window pop up with something being executed and she was trying to draw something. So let's see if we can identify any of those processes here. Uh, if we take a look at all the processes, we can see that uh, the dump it utility here was uh, actually used to make the dump, which is, uh, again, that's a tool you can use uh, to make a Windows memory dump. Uh, we don't see anything interesting here. So maybe those processes were hidden. So how do we identify hidden processes? Well, we can do that uh, by essentially uh, running the following command. So instead of saying PS list, we can essentially type in PS uh, tree. All right, so we'll give that a couple of seconds. 
and there we are okay so we can now start to see that we have cmd.exe and ms paint so it looks like the individual sister uh, was actually utilizing ms paint to draw something that makes sense and then uh, she actually saw a black screen which uh, you know would be uh, cmd.exe so uh, this uh, we actually need to investigate these processes however let's take a close look at some of the other processes here uh, we can actually see at the time of this memory dump uh, we have WinRAR also running at the time. And uh, yeah, that pretty much looks like the most important ones here. So we know that we have, uh, you know, MS Paint and CMD.exe. So uh, what we can do is let's explore the WinRAR process and let's see what it was doing. All right, so we're going to check the commands that launched that specific program. And in order to do that, we're just going to copy the process ID for WinRAR, which is 1512. And uh, we can use the previous command here. And instead of saying PS3, we can say command line. And, uh, you know, we can specify the process ID, which is 1512 and hit enter. And in this case, it tells us that this is what was done. So command line, C program files, WinRAR, uh, WinRAR.exe. And it looks like WinRAR was compressing or extracting the following file. So important.rar. Very, very interesting there. Okay, so important.rar. And uh, we know that the sister's name is Alisa Simpson. And this was under documents. Okay, so that is very, very important information. So we've identified that. Now, one thing I want to do is I actually want to utilize the console plugin. So what I'll do here is I'll just say volatility just to explain what it does, info, and I'll just grep and say consoles. There we are. We'll give this a couple of seconds and you can see con the consoles plugin is used to extract command history. All right, so let's see what, uh, what commands were being executed in cmd.exe. So what we could do is we could specify the process ID for that uh, using the command line uh, plugin, or we can also use the consoles plugin, but let's say 1984, just to see what's, what was going on here. All right, so yeah, uh, that makes sense. Uh, CMD was executed with uh, system or administrative privileges. So we can now say consoles, and hit enter and uh, let's see what this displays here so command history okay i think i saw a flag there but uh let's go back here so we can see that the console process connection host.exe uh let's see um nothing there command history if we take a look at this here we can see that c users smartnet ran the following process and we then get the following base64 uh, encoded string of text. So uh, I'm guessing this is a flag here. And uh, yeah, it is a flag. So uh, because it's encoded in base64, we can essentially just uh, echo the content of the flag here. So I'll just say uh, echo, and we can then pipe this to base64 and uh, say, um, you know, we can actually just decrypt that. And there we are. So we get the first flag. So flag, this is the first flag. Excellent. So hopefully this is giving you an insight as to how to utilize volatility to identify important bits of information. Now, again, in this case, uh, you know, this is just being used to find flags, but it's giving you an idea of the various plugins to use and where to use them. All right. So we found the first flag, which is great. I think I'll find one more and then I'll leave the final one to you guys. Uh, okay. So that's flag one down. Uh, one thing I realized, if we actually uh, take a look at, um, if we take a look at the WinRAR process, because we had, uh, there we are, so command line process 1512, we actually saw this very interesting file here, right? So that file is uh, under C uses Alyssa Simpson documents important.rar. So I'm guessing that uh, that was actually the output file. So something was compressed within that and saved under the following path as important.rar. So how can we actually, uh, you know, perform a file scan on this particular file to learn more about it? Well, we can save volatility. And uh, again, we're just going to get rid of command line and we're going to use the file scan plugin. And we're then going to say uh, grep i 
and we're looking for an uh, we're looking for a specific file in this case it's important.rar and let's get the information for that particular file so uh, we would need the actual uh, there we are so it actually displays that there now if you want to learn more about this so I can say volatility uh, and uh, you know I can say info and uh, let me just uh, cancel that there and I'm going to pipe and say grep and file scan just to learn what it does you can see that uh, this will this is a pool scanner for file objects so we've identified the offset for that particular file and uh, what we can do now to actually dump the file from the actual memory dump onto our local system is we can utilize volatility again with the previous command here and uh, in this case we can get rid of that there and I'm just going to say uh, sorry let me just terminate that there we're just going to use the previous command and instead of using the file scan plugin what we're going to say is we're going to utilize the dump files uh, the dump files plugin and then specify the offset so again if I just open up uh, the actual volatility help menu here uh, you should be able to see uh, sorry that's uh, on my own system my bad uh, so let me let me just explain what we're going to be doing so volatility help and we're used utilizing the Q uh, the, the Q command here and we're going to use a couple of others that are very important. So I just wanted to explain them with the official uh, nomenclature. So uh, we are going to be utilizing the D, uh, the D option, which is really not being displayed here. So I'm guessing I'm going to be, I'm going to have to utilize uh, the actual uh, info command. So let me just open that up and I'll show you how to dump that particular file to our local system. So uh, these are all the plugins here. We're then going to have the profiles and uh, that should be displayed here. Um, it's not being displayed there. That's very interesting. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just uh, give you the command that uh, needs to be run. So we're going to dump that, uh, but we're getting rid of the file scan plugin and we're going to be utilizing the dump files, uh, the dump files plugin. We're going to specify the offset, uh, but in order to do that, we're going to need the offset. So I'm just going to run the previous command again, just to get the offset for that particular file there. And uh, there we are. Okay, so I can run the previous command and we can say dump files. And then we use hyphen uppercase Q, specify the actual offset here and uh, let's just copy that there and what we're going to do then is we're going to specify where we want this saved right so i'm going to say d uh, and in the our current working directory so uh, d and uh, we then specify file and then we can say file.data or file.dat hit enter Uh, you can see that we should have that uh, file there. So file.data here. And if I say D-U-S-H, there we are. We can see we have dumped it. And we know that this is a tar file. So I'm just going to, you know, change the extension from file.none.data uh, to uh, important.rar. That is what the file was called, uh, you know, on the system when the memory dump was taken. And if we say tar xzvf important.tar, Uh, let's see that doesn't exist that's very weird uh, chmod plus x important dot tar uh, let me just uh, change that command accordingly uh, and if we say uh, important dot tar that doesn't look like it's working that's very interesting can we use unrar uh, let's see if that works there so important dot rar uh, we need to get that so yeah that's we we're not really dealing with a tarball. We're actually dealing with a file that is in RAR format. So, app get install unrar. Uh, let me just type that in here. So, app get install unrar, and we're going to extract it. So, unrar x important dot rar. Uh, okay, so it's saying we need a password, and then it tells us the password is the NTLM hash in uppercase 
of Alisa's account password. Okay, so in order to get flag three, that's interesting. We actually got flag three. So in order to extract this, uh, we are going to need to um, dump the hashes, the NTLM hashes, uh, and uh, you know we need the actual NTLM hash in uppercase for the uh, for Alisa's account. So in order to do this, we're going to need to utilize volatility again. So let me just uh, select the previous command here. So instead of using the file scan plugin, we can utilize a plugin called uh, hash dump. Absolutely insane. So I'll hit enter. And that should give us the hashes. Uh, let's see if we actually get that. There we are. Fantastic. All right. So we need the actual hash uh, in uppercase for Elisa. So this is uh, an NTLM system. So uh, we know that, uh, you know, this is going to be the hash here because the first value really doesn't change. So we're going to need to copy that there. And that's where Cyberchef comes into play. That'll just, uh, you know, change it to uppercase. So we can say to uppercase put our input and it changes it to uppercase there. And we can now try and extract or unrar the file here. So there we are, I'll paste that in there. And we get flag 3.png. All right, so it is a PNG flag, which is, uh, which means we actually have to uh, transfer it to our own system, or to my local Ubuntu system to actually view it. So the way we're going to do this, is I am going to open up my previous SCP command. So what we want to do here is we want to get the file called flag3.png. Uh, so we're copying this from the remote server to our current working directory, and it's going to ask me for my server password, which I will gladly provide. There we are. So we've got flag3 within my home directory, and if we open up flag3, there we are. So there's the, the third flag, so flag3, there we are. So that was easy. Fair enough. That was easy. So that is how to utilize volatility for memory forensics. Now, of course, I haven't covered all the uh, all the plugins you can utilize, uh, you know, in order to extract important information. But as I said, everything is available to you, you know, with a click of a particular command. So, you know, you can just run the volatility info command and you can get access to the plugins you can use based on the operating system memory dump that you're trying to extract information from. Another interesting one that we can take a look at is dump registry and the environment variables, right? So uh, we can say dump registry. Um, and the other one that we wanted to use was, uh, let's see if I can find it here. Um, I believe the, the one that I wanted to showcase, uh, let's see. So the one I wanted to showcase really was going to be uh, the environment variable uh, option. We can dump the registry with dumped files. So environment variables and dump registry. All right, so we'll just say uh, environment variables and uh, we can then say dump registry so these are all the environment variables there There's a lot of data is going to be produced and then we can say dump uh, registry uh, the most important thing to take into consideration is going to be the actual um, is going to be the actual profile you use in this case we'll need to specify the dump directory or where we want to dump it to and that's we had done previously with the dump files option so uh, you know if i say d and specify my current working directory, you can see it's going to write out the registry to the following uh, registry files, which we can then analyze on a Windows system. So if I list out the contents of my current working directory, you can see all of the registries there. So uh, these are the registries for uh, security, default software, etc. And you can go ahead and analyze them. So that is going to conclude the practical demonstration side of this video. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel to ask them uh, on my Twitter. Uh, the link to that is going to be added as a resource. Uh, furthermore, all the links highlighted in this video demonstration will also be added as a resource to this video. So you can actually uh, go ahead uh, in, or actually follow along with the challenge uh, itself and take a look at some of the other challenges uh, that you can actually play through or go through to learn more about how to utilize volatility. With that being said, in the next video, we're going to be uh, continuing our journey into digital forensics. 
uh, by taking a look at how to perform disk analysis with autopsy. So with that being said, I'll be seeing you in the next video.